In every sport, there are many people that are good at the game. There are far fewer that are great. And then there are those precious few that go beyond great. Those that are so immersed in the sport that it consumes them. They are the specialists. I'm Ernie Calandrelli with Quaker Boy Game Calls. I've worked full-time for them for 32 years. It's been a great ride, great industry. But I actually started helping Dick Kirby in 1977, which puts me right at about 40 years right now. Wing bone calls is just something I like to do. I don't claim to be an artist, and I trust me, I'm not even close to being an artist. But I enjoy doing them. It uses up some more of the turkey, and the people that I make it for really seem to enjoy them when I do give them one. But mine are from me, and they're from the heart, no doubt about it. You know, like most people, the first time I heard a wild turkey gobble, I mean, it just eats you up. It's a sickness. It's a disease. And I wanted to learn and know everything I could possibly learn about hunting wild turkeys. And part of that was, you know, I heard the old lores about the wing bone calls. And I, re I saw, read some magazine articles, you know, on, uh, you know, like 40 years ago that, that were written on making wing bone calls. But I also do remember seeing an old uh, VHS tape where somebody actually made a wing bone. Well, as far as making a wing bone call, it's a long, drawn-out process. And the first thing you gotta do, of course, is kill a turkey. So the first thing I do is I remove the wings from the turkey. Uh, then what I, you know, then there's splits. You gotta, you split it, and it, there is three bones. There's the one big bone that, of course, is the rotator bone, which is their main bone. Then the middle one has all their flight feathers on it. And then the, uh, the last bone that will flip out, which is your actual mouthpiece, uh, is the one who has the, the secondary flight feathers on that bone. So what you do is, what, you know, once you get the three bones separated, I scrape the meat with a knife and get it as good as I can, you know, of course, and cut the meat off it. Then I'll, uh, I want to cut them off, and, you know, and, and it varies. Whatever length you make each bone will actually change the sound of the call. So I don't even measure them or anything like that. I just chop them off or cut them off right where they're at, and however they turn out, they turn out. They all sound like a hen turkey, uh, but they're either going to be high pitch, low pitch. Some of them may work a little easier than others, but you'll learn that as you go. But once I get all the meat cleaned off, then you have to get the marrow out of it, and the marrow is pretty, uh, well, I'm going to say snotty in the two littler bones, the mouthpiece bone and the middle bone. So anymore, I know I used to have to run hot water in it and blow it to get it out. Once I get the bones cleaned out to where I like them, then I soak them at least 24 hours in hydrogen peroxide. Now, just normal hydrogen peroxide that you get at any store is fine. Once I get that done, then you have to shape them to fit. The little bone into the middle bone, the middle bone into the big bone. So you'll have to sand and grind, and again, you know, this day and age, I'm using a Dremel tool, and I'll grind around till I get them to fit together. Once I get them to fit together, I will use uh, super glue and just dab and go around each bone just to hold them. Once that gets held, you know, I go to the hardware store and get that two-part uh, epoxy that, you know, you cut off in certain sections and you mix it up with your fingers. Once it gets to where, where it's right, then I mold it around the two joints in the call. Once that gets hard, you sand it down to where it's somewhat level or as good as you can get it. And at the end, I wrap it with thread. Uh, like I say, there, there are guys that really do pretty ones. They'll do a lot of designs on them, uh, artistic work. They may put turkeys on them, turkey feathers, what have you. I'm not that, I'm not that artistic, uh, but I still enjoy doing it. So what I do, because I'll put my name on it or whatever, or write, write it to who I'm giving it to, and uh, then I'll, from a big distance, put a clear coat on it, 
then I'll hit it again after that dries and you can give it a little more juice with that clear coat to hopefully get that writing to stay on there. But once I get all said and done with that, as long as that call is good and clear, then you put it on the corner of your lip of your mouth and get some suction to it and you should sound like a hen turkey. You know, a lot of people, uh, they call me a specialist or an expert. Bottom line for me is I love to hunt and I was lucky enough to do it for a living for over 30 years.